now you can see I've got one, two, three, four values, and I need to know which one is highest and which one is lowest. So I'm going to do a table of values. There's no way to get away from this. You have to test all these points. Okay. So therefore, uh, different color. I have one, two, three, four coordinates to test. Right. So therefore, I'm going to draw my table. Wait, so why do you need to test like half and half? I'll show you. So. I've got five columns because I am not testing x against the first derivative or x against the second derivative. I actually want to know where is the function? How high or low am I? What's the maximum or minimum value? Okay. Now I look at my numbers, a half, five, one, three, and I'm just going to put them in order. Right? A half comes first, it's the leftmost endpoint. One and three are in the middle, and five is on the end. Okay. Not that you have to do this, but these four points I'm testing, they're not all the same. You've got endpoints here and here, EP for endpoint, or you could say B, you'll sometimes see BV for boundary value. And in the middle here, I've got two stationary points. Okay. Now, all I need to do is just, I need to plug in the values. That's, that's all that's required here. Okay. So for instance, I'm not going to do the endpoints just yet. I'm going to do these two in here. Right Now, it doesn't take too much to see. You're going to get 0 and negative 4. Okay. That's, the, um, that's the intercept there, and you can work that out. That's just number crunching. Okay. Now, do you see why I didn't bother to determine the nature of these stationary points? Like, I, I don't need to. This is the local, this is the relative maximum, and this is the relative minimum. Oh. But it's, it's lower. Of course it's the relative minimum. How could it be the relative max if it's lower than the other stationary point? Okay? So I didn't need to make any fancy arguments about that. There I've got the stationary point values, but I also need to see, well, what happens here and here? Okay? Now, I've crunched these numbers already for you. You can pop them into the equation if you like and get some numbers, but you should get these. Okay. Now, the really interesting thing happens when you look at this. Okay? Now I've got all the possible places where I could be highest or lowest. Right? What's the lowest you can see? Minus four. Negative four, right? There's the minimum, the actual minimum, which happens to correspond with the stationary point. So this relative minimum is also the absolute minimum. Okay, I'll write that all out in a second. Where's the max? It's it, the maximum itself is 16 and it occurs at x equals 5. It's this guy, right? So my relative maximum over here is not the absolute maximum, the end point is. Now, really quickly, on the basis of this, let's just really roughly sketch this. Okay, it's not hard to draw. Isn't it better than to do this rather than doing a table of values to determine nature and normal problems? Okay, now we are we're answering two different kinds of problems here. Okay, if all I'm interested in is tell me where the highest is, tell me where the lowest is, then I don't need to be fine and rigorous in determining what kind of stationary point it is. For example, I don't care whether it's a horizontal point inflection or not. Oh, okay. That has no relevance to the, the actual question I'm trying to answer because it's a max or a minimum that I'm after. Yeah. And once I determine the nature, like I still need to know what the actual value is anyway to know how it compares to the endpoints, right? So that's why it's not important. Okay. All right, let's just really quickly draw this. So here is my domain, okay? so. I'm just going to plot these points, right? At a half, uh, I'm going to go from a half to five. So if I say one, two, three, four, five, there's one endpoint. That means a half is about there. Okay. So at a half, I'm at negative seven on eight. Actually, this is going to be terrible for my scale. I'm going to need to put that a bit closer. Something like that. Let's call that minus seven over eight. At one, which is right there. This is a stationary point, right? So I'm not only going to put a point there, I'm going to put the horizontal line there as well to indicate what's happening. At three, one, two, three, I'm at negative four. So that's like down here somewhere, right? Down here. So I'm going to put that there, and I'm also going to put a horizontal line through it to indicate it will be a stationary point in a second. And then at five, I'm all the way up at 16. There's my end point, okay? So I have four dots, and all I have to do is join the dots. Right? Do you want to raise a question? Yeah. Okay, look at where I'm going to go. Stationary point, stationary point, end point. Have you got a picture now? Do you see how, like, what other kind of path could I trace given that this is where the stationary points are, this is where the end points are, I'm done. And now you can see obviously why this is the actual minimum. This is the absolute minimum, right? 
This endpoint over here doesn't get low enough. Were I to extend the domain further over here, it's a cubic, right? It's going to drop off like this. But in the particular domain I'm interested in, this is the one. And of course up here, here's my absolute max. So uh, I did say this verbally before, but I'll just um, write it as well. How am I going to conclude this? I would say the absolute minimum, the minimum itself is this value, minus 4. That's the lowest it can actually go. The absolute minimum is minus 4, which happens at x equals 3. And likewise, the absolute maximum is this actual value, 16, which occurs at x equals 5. Oh, so and like the actual value is a y. Correct. That's right. I'm looking for the, the function itself. As it's showing, right? And now as well, we, now we have a picture. You can see the folly of ignoring endpoints. Why do I have to test the endpoints? If all you've got is the stationary points, right? you're kind of ignoring lots of significant parts of the function. I can go way higher. That's the real absolute maximum not the relative one.